Now, beneath the Alps, near the city of Geneva, Switzerland, there is a tunnel. Colliding its first protons again after three years of upgrades faster than ever before. That machine is the Large Hadron Collider. It's the world's biggest and most powerful particle accelerator, a multi-billion dollar instrument. Years after the Higgs boson particle was discovered, the world's largest experiment is still attempting to unravel the secrets of our cosmos. CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, on the outskirts of Geneva, simulates the aftermath of the Big Bang by sending protons flying into one another at near to the speed of light. Despite the excitement in the physics community when the Higgs boson was discovered in 2012, and popular satisfaction that the experiment did not suck the entire planet into a gaping vortex, there is still much to learn. What have the CERN scientists uncovered recently? Stay with us until the finish as we delve into CERN's latest disturbing revelation. CERN researchers created global headlines a decade ago when they discovered the Higgs boson, a long-sought particle that gives mass to all other particles in the universe. What is there left to discover? Almost everything according to optimistic scientists. The universe was up for grabs when the CERN collider was initially turned on in 2010. The machine, the largest and most powerful ever built, was created to search for the Higgs boson. That particle is the foundation of the standard model, a system of equations that describes everything scientists have been able to measure about the subatomic realm. However, the standard model does not answer certain larger issues about the universe. What is the origin of the universe? Why is it formed of matter as opposed to antimatter? What exactly is the dark matter that fills the universe? How does the Higgs particle get mass? When the Large Collider was initially turned on in 2010, physicists looked for some answers. Except for the Higgs, no new particles that could explain the nature of dark matter were discovered. Unfortunately, the standard model remained unshaken. Even with the Higgs discovery, the standard model is incomplete since it only describes three of the four basic forces, excluding gravity. While the theory of relativity adequately covers gravity, the problem is that there is no framework connecting these two theories to provide us with a cohesive picture of the cosmos. Furthermore, the standard model fails to explain dark matter, a mysterious substance assumed to provide additional mass to the galaxies and account for 27% of the universe. Equally shady is the question of dark energy, which accounts for another 68% and is thought to be associated with vacuums. In essence, the stuff we know about, which includes all stars and galaxies, amounts for barely 5% of the universe. Suffice it to say, scientists have a lot more to uncover beyond the Higgs boson, with possible practical applications well beyond anything we can envision right now. Experiments often take the form of make it, break it or shake it to search for dark matter. The LHC has been attempting to achieve this goal by colliding proton beams, some experiments are looking for indirect indications of dark matter particles colliding and breaking themselves out in space using telescopes in orbit and on the ground. Others are still pursuing these elusive particles directly by looking for the kicks or shakes they cause in underground detectors. The make it strategy complements the break it and shake it experiments, and if the LHC identifies a possible dark matter particle, confirmation from the other experiments will be required to verify that it is, in fact, a dark matter particle. In contrast, if the direct and indirect experiments receive a signal from a dark matter particle interaction, LHC experiments may be tailored to investigate the intricacies of that interaction. So how has the LHC searched for evidence of dark matter formation in proton collisions? In such collisions, the major indicator of the presence of a dark matter particle is the so-called missing transverse momentum. To check for this signal, researchers tally up the momenta of the particles visible to the LHC detectors, specifically the momenta at right angles to the colliding beams of protons, and find any missing momentum required to attain the total momentum prior to the collision. Because the protons move along the path of the beams before colliding, the overall momentum should be zero. However, if the total momentum following the collision is not zero, the missing momentum might have been transported away by an undiscovered dark matter particle. Missing momentum is the foundation for two types of LHC searches. One type is governed by what are known as completely new physics models, such as supersymmetry SUSY models. 
the known particles represented by the standard model of particle physics contain a supersymmetric companion particle with a quantum feature called spin that differs by half a unit from its counterpart in SUSY models. Furthermore, the lightest supersymmetric particle in many SUSY systems is a weakly interacting massive particle, WIMP. WIMPs are one of the most intriguing hypotheses for a dark matter particle since they might be responsible for the universe's present abundance of dark matter. When looking for SUSY WIMPs, researchers hunt for evidence of missing momentum from two dark matter particles together with the spray, sometimes known as a jet, of particles or particles that are termed leptons. Another sort of search employing the missing momentum signature is led by simplified models that incorporate a WIMP-like dark matter particle and a mediator particle that interacts with known ordinary particles. The mediator can be either a known particle like the Z boson or an undiscovered particle like the Higgs boson. These models have gained popularity in recent years since they are relatively basic yet universal in nature and they may be used as benchmarks for comparing LHC with non-collider dark matter studies. This second form of search looks for at least one extremely energetic item, such as a jet of particles or a photon, in addition to missing momentum from a pair of dark matter particles. In the context of simplified models, one alternative to missing momentum searches is to hunt for the mediator particle through its transition, or decay, into ordinary particles rather than the dark matter particle. This method searches for a spike in the mass distribution of events with two jets or two leptons against a smooth backdrop of events in the collision data. What have the LHC experiments learned from these WIMP searches? The short answer is that no evidence of WIMP dark matter has yet been discovered. The lengthier answer is that they have ruled out enormous portions of theoretical WIMP territory and placed strict limits on the permitted values of attributes of both the dark matter particle and the mediator particle, such as their masses and interactions with other particles. Now for a bit of trivia. Did you know that the Large Hadron Collider is colder than outer space? To be exact, it's 1.9 K, minus 271.3 degrees Celsius, which is close to absolute zero. A cryogenic cooling system maintains it this cold for the superconductor electromagnets, which send proton beams racing towards one another in a loop 100 meters underground. If you were shooting bursts of 200,000 billion protons around a 27 kilometer ring at a speed of 11,000 times per second, you'd also need some help staying cool. Proton beams hurtle around the ring in opposing directions until they smash with enough force to produce a slew of subatomic particles including the Higgs boson. A set of gargantuan detectors then crunch some of the data from 40 million collisions a second. Scientists at the European Centre for Nuclear Research fired up their cosmic gun, the Large Hadron Collider, once more in April. The collider has begun blasting protons, the bare guts of hydrogen atoms, along its 17-mile electromagnetic subterranean track after a three-year halt for maintenance and improvements. The collider began crashing these particles together in early July, creating sparks of primal energy. So the great game of searching for the mystery of the cosmos has resumed, amidst new advances and renewed optimism among particle physicists. The collider had been giving signs that nature may be concealing something remarkable even before it was upgraded. Data from prior runs were regarded as the most exciting set of results I've seen in my professional lifetime by Mitesh Patel a particle physicist at Imperial College London who leads an experiment at CERN. The collider was shut down for substantial improvements and maintenance towards the end of 2018. According to the current timetable, the collider will run until 2025 before shutting down for two years to allow for additional major upgrades to be made. Among the upgrades are enhancements to massive detectors that sit at the four sites where proton beams smash and study the impact debris. The proton beams have been compressed to increase their intensity, boosting the likelihood of protons colliding at the crossing points, but also confusing the detectors and computers with several sprays of particles that must be distinguished from one another. Meanwhile, a number of tests have shown probable flaws in the standard model, pointing to a larger, more comprehensive view of the universe. 
These findings entail unusual actions of subatomic particles with names that most of us in the cosmic bleachers are unfamiliar with. Take the muon, a subatomic particle that sprang to prominence last year. Muons are sometimes known as fat electrons because they have the same negative electrical charge as electrons but are 207 times more massive. When muons were discovered in 1936, physicist Isidore Rabi asked, who ordered that? Nobody understands where muons fit into the big picture. They are produced by cosmic ray collisions as well as collider events and decay radioactively in microseconds into a fizz of electrons and the ghostly particles known as neutrinos. Last year, a team of 200 scientists from Illinois' Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory discovered that muons rotating in a magnetic field wobbled more faster than expected by the standard model. The difference between theoretical predictions and experimental results was found at the eighth decimal place of the value of a parameter termed G2, which defined how the particle reacted to a magnetic field. Scientists attributed the fractional but substantial change to the quantum whisper of as yet unknown particles that would form briefly surrounding the muon and influence its properties. Confirming the particle's existence would, in the end, shatter the standard model. While waiting for new data from the Fermilab experiment, two groups of theorists are still striving to reconcile their predictions of what G2 should be. The muon also figures in another anomaly. The primary character, or possibly antagonistic, in this play is a particle known as a B quark, one of six types of quarks that make up heavier particles like as protons and neutrons. B stands for bottom, or perhaps beauty. These quarks are found in two quark particles known as B mesons. However, these quarks are unstable and prone to breaking apart in ways that appear to contradict the standard model. This could be a standard model killer, said Dr. Patel, whose group has been studying B quarks with one of the Large Hadron Collider's large detectors, LHCb. This anomaly, like the magnetic anomaly of the muon, suggests the presence of an unknown influencer, a particle or force interfering with the reaction. Dr. Patel believes that a subatomic speculation known as a leptoquark is one of the most dramatic possibilities if these results hold up. If the particle exists, it may be able to bridge the gap between two types of particles that constitute the material universe. What do you think about all of this? Do you believe that the scientists working at CERN are poking around in areas they shouldn't be? Tell us in the comments section.